Sometimes even the best of us can end up shooting footage which has got an incorrect white balance, making it look either too blue, too orangey, or even too green. However, this can be rescued using the correct tools and methods. In this video, I'll show you not only how you can firstly identify if the footage has been correctly white balanced in the first place, but secondly, using Adobe Premiere Pro, I'll show you two methods on how you can rescue it and bring it back to being usable once more. Now before I get into the main white balancing section, I want to go over a little thing about how you actually know that the scene you've got or piece of footage you've got is actually correctly white balanced. Now in a correctly white balanced scene, there is no perceivable shift to the red, green or blue. And this shows up the most when you've got uh, some sort of reference in the scene. Now, this scene here was shot on a Panasonic SD900 camcorder. And in the scene, just as I started, I actually put this uh, X-Rite color checker card in here. And it's got the colors on here. And it's also got these gray scales at the bottom here. Now, these cards are precision calibrated cards. So you know that this is a pure white, this is a pure gray, and that is a pure black. Now, when I set this scene up, I calibrated the white balance on the camera against this white balance card here. So if it's all correct, then these should all be exactly the same in proportion of the amount of red, green and blues. Now we can tell that by using the color picker and we're in After Effects because Premiere doesn't have a color picker function on here. And that's actually in the info panel. And if we look over here, the top here, we've got info panel. And if you don't see that, if you go over to window, Go down to here and you've got info and little tick box there. That will make it appear. Now, there's a couple of ways you can set this up. I've got it set to percent because it's quite easy to understand there. You can also have it set up as 8-bit, 0 to 255, 10-bit, 0 to 1024, 1023, and 16-bit, 0 to 32,768. I've got it set on percent, so wherever the mouse tip is, it will give me a readout in percentage. The percentage is from zero, which is gonna be no luminance, to 100%, which is full luminance. In other words, from black to white, if it was on these scales here. Now, if we look at this, where well, we go down to our card, we actually balanced it against first. We've got 54.9 across red, green, and blue. That means there is no shift. They're exactly the same. They're all equal values on the red, green, and blue channels. And we look on the X-Rite card, and we've got 67.8. Again, it's exactly balanced across the color spectrum. We go to a mid-gray, 47.8, exactly balanced. We go down to the blacks, 9.4, exactly balanced. So now we know this scene here, or this piece of footage, is correctly white balanced. So we've seen a white balanced piece of footage which has been correctly done. Now let's have a look at something which was incorrectly balanced. And I've got two pieces of footage here in Premiere on the timeline. And I've got this one which you're seeing now, which is the correct, correctly balanced one. And here's one which was set on a incorrect setting. It was basically set on the tungsten setting. So it was expecting to be shot under a tungsten light, which is around about 3200 Kelvin. And it's a much more orangey yellow light. And you can see what's actually happened here is that the blue has really sort of taken over. It's given this really strong blue color cast. Now, if we look down here at our reference monitors, and if you're unfamiliar with these things, these are technical monitors which are available in Premiere, and they really do show you what's going on that you can't necessarily see with your eyes so easily. On here, we've got the RGB parade. This is what is making up this image here, as far as the levels concerned, the levels of red, green, and the blue. This uh, YC waveform here is the luminance, and that's the darkest part, this is the brightest part, and this is representation across the scene here. So if I scroll across, you'll see the little things sort of move across, and you can see the cars actually moving across here, so it represents what's going on in the scene. And this round one here is a vector scope, and this shows the, the, the amount of color or where the color is based in the scene, and also the amount of color. If there is no color, then the basically the dot will be in the center here. The more color it is, the more it spreads out to the edge. And these lines here represent 
what is a, effectively a color wheel. And uh, we'll see that in a moment. But this at the moment is showing that it's got strong color cast towards the blue area here. So we know that we're missing the red primarily because of the way the camera was set up and it recorded the footage with this very blue, strong blue cast. So to get rid of this, first we need to find the fast color corrector, which is the most common way of actually doing this. The reason for that is that the fast color corrector has a white balance tool built into it. So we'll just find this. And if we go onto the effects panel here, and then we go down to color correction, which we've already got actually open. So video effects, and then we've got our fast color corrector. And we just need to drag that onto the footage on the timeline and here is our color wheel now as i was saying this color wheel here is actually the same representation as the vector scope over here so you can see that we've got orange magenta cyan blue green yellow and you can see where the blue cast is here and that's the blue cast there and what the fast color corrector is going to do is effectively push the image towards the red side so it's where it's based to bias towards the blue at the moment, it's going to push it towards the red side. And we do that by using this. This is the white balance tool. Now, there is only one color picker here. And effectively, what you do is you click on the little eyedropper here. And then you pick somewhere something is white or the brightest white you actually want to balance. And what it's going to do is then use that as then the basis of trying to work out how to actually adjust this. And as you can see, when we're moving this around over the white areas, you can see this is actually going to be moving where it thinks it should be so if I go to the color card here you see it's pushing it towards the orange a white on the door white on the roof white on the van these sort of areas here we'll pick the white on the door here because if you didn't have this in the scene the color correction card this would be probably the nearest thing you'd have to a white so we'll pick that and you can see that it's actually now tried to balance it out. We've got more of a blue go away and more of a red come back. And if we look on our reference monitors here, we've seen that it's actually shifted more towards the center. And the this gr green splodge here effectively should be balanced. If it's correctly balanced, it will be in the center here. The red should come up a bit more. So it's balancing out on these. We're still a little bit dark on the actual luminance. So the first thing we can do is to actually bring up the luminance. So we'll bring this up here and that's gonna brighten up. Now we're getting back to more of a level of what we were before, but we're still blue cast here. If we flick back to the original, we'll see the difference. There is still quite a strong blue cast. And in fact, if you look at the original on this, you'll see that it's more centrally biased here the luminance is up, but we're still missing the red. So we need to come over to here and we need to push this over. And the more we pull this little uh, control out to the red side, the more red it will add. In fact, you can see what it does. If we go to magenta, it'll make it magenta. If we go to green, it'll make it green. If we go back to blue, it'll push it back to blue. So this is what you're doing. This is the offset we're applying. And we're trying to get this. So we've got the red, back in here again, which is trying to match this red here. Now, bear in mind, you might not have a reference footage to uh, work with, so you've got to sort of do it by eye. So you've got to say, well, I think this is looking okay, but perhaps it needs a little bit more red in there. And if you do need a bit more and you can't go any further out, this second control acts like a sort of multiplier. And the more you push this out, then it will really ramp up the red. And if you watch the uh, RGB parade at the bottom here, you can see as I'm pushing this up, it, the red goes whoa, off the top, the blue goes down, and it goes crazy. Now, if we bring this back to where we think it looks by the controls here, somewhere around about there, so that sort of looks by eye not too bad. We've got the reds come back, the greens are here, uh, it's not looking too bad. Now let's have a look what it looks like with the original. It's not far out. It's still a little bit on the bluish side. The problem is that this color picker only has one level. Other tools, which we've got in After Effects, 
like the color neutralizer, used three tools for the low, medium, and high. In other words, the shadows, the, the mediums, and the highlights. This has only got one control. So if we uh, just bring this up to 100% here, and we look in the shadows here, if we go red, we start to turn everything red, and the lows or the shadows start to turn red, whereas the original doesn't have that. So although we're getting the reds back in the bricks and the tiles and things like that, if we go too far with this control, pushing up the red here, we'll make it too biased towards the red. And then it'll start to look not quite right. And this is the way the fast color corrector works. It's a, it's a quick tool. And because it's a quick tool, people just think you click on here, click on white, and that's it. It actually does need more tweaking. You do need to probably push up your levels here to bring this up. Bring up the mid-range, a little bit brightness there. And then you've got to play around with this to sort of get it how you want it. And you really need to sort of find where you think it should be. If you haven't got a reference point, if you have got a reference point, then you can be much more accurate. But you've got to sort of say, well, I think it should be around about there. So you don't want it so it's getting red in the shadows. And, but you don't want it equally too blue. Otherwise, you're not really getting rid of a color cast. So this is the fast color corrector. And I say it's a good tool, but it does need a little bit of work and it does need more effort than you think than a lot of people just clicking on here. If you've got something which has less of a color cast, in other words, it's not a strong blue, we'll compare how we, where we were to where we got to, that's quite good. If we've got something which isn't a strong blue, then it can bring it back to quite near to how it should be. The other disadvantage of this is that because we've only got one white point, if there is no white in the scene, it's quite difficult often to actually get a balanced image because it's trying to look for a white point. So if you've got something which is like a woodland scene, for example, that might be all greens and yellows and oranges, you've got no white to actually work on. So that then can be a little bit of an issue. But otherwise, that's the fast color corrector and the white balance tool in there. And that's probably the commonest way that you would use to white balance in Premiere. Now, the second method of color correction I'm going to use is called the divide method. Now, this is quite different to the fast color corrector. In It works by effectively removing a color from the scene rather than adding an opposite color to the scene like the fast color corrector did. Now, the way to get it to work is, first of all, we need a black layer. And we need to create that. So we go to new item, color matte. And it's the right size we've got there, 1920 by 1080. We want a solid black layer, so keep it black. And then we'll call it black. And that's it. Now we've got a black item we can put onto the actual uh, timeline. Drag that onto the timeline and put it on the layer above the actual layer you want to affect. So it's this one here. Now I just need to stretch this out cross to there like that. Now we need to add a tint to this layer. And what we're gonna do there is we select the layer, go over to our effects and type in T-I-N-T, -T, and in under color correction, we've got tint. And if we just show how we get to that normally, it's down here, color correction, and then the bottom there is tint. Add tint to it and then go back to the effect control. Now. What we need to do is, because we can't see anything, we've got this black layer over, we turn the layer off. So we just toggle the, uh, the output there so we can now see the layer, what we need to actually pick underneath. We go to our tint and we get the map black color picker and we want to pick the brightest white item, which isn't blown out. It must not be blown out. It needs to still have a color in there, but it needs to be the brightest white you can find on here. Now I know these are not the brightest. They are white, but they're not the brightest. Now, if I just drop that out again and just zoom in a little bit, I know that the door and the actual roof area here are the brightest areas. So if I was to click here, select there or there, you can see the actual color is going to show up in the little pick box. And it's that sort of cyan color, the light cyan color. And that's a little bit lighter on the roof there. So I'll pick that one there. Now we've got that. We then need to actually 
go to our opacity blend mode. If we drop down, you'll see blend mode underneath here, and we need to select divide. Now, once we've got that, we need then to actually just go back to here, fit, and then turn this back on. And hey presto, look at that. We've removed that blue tint. Uh, now, we'll see how it looks on the scopes. You can see we've actually brought up the levels much more here. We've reduced the, the blue down, which has basically brought up the red. We're still a little bit shifted towards blue. Now, the problem with this is that you can't actually adjust any colors. We've literally just got this map to black, and that's it. Now, if we want to change anything, we'll need to turn this off again, and then reselect. And if we go and pick, say, a darker, slightly darker color, you'll see the effect it has. If we pick this one here, and then turn it back on, it does it, but it makes it brighter. The darker that color is you've picked, the brighter the output will become. And now that's too much. We've washed out the blue, we've brought everything up. It sort of brought it out, but it's almost made it look like an overcast day with sun um, because we've taken out too much of the blue level there. Turn it off again and then go pick the white on the door there, for example, and then turn it back on and then we brought it back again. So the only way you can really do this is to sort of pick and choose the sort of color you actually want. And what you're doing is you're then saying whatever color is that that's masked over the white will remove it using the divide in the blend mode, and that removes it. Now, what I've sometimes done with this is actually then add onto this the fast color corrector onto the clip underneath. So if we add on the fast color corrector to the clip underneath like that, and then go back to here, and then sort of do a double take on this. I'm gonna do, pick the color corrector again, and this time I'm gonna pick the normal sort of, I'll pick the white. Should I put blue or white? I'll go for the that one there, balanced white. And now you see it's brought it back up again. It's boosted it back up. And look at this, now we've got full range of red, green and blue, we've shifted more to the top and we're also brighter as well. So let's see what the difference is now between this and the original. That's the original, it's actually a little bit brighter than the original now. Whereas before, when we used the color corrector, it made it tend to be sort of slightly darker. This is brighter, so in fact, if anything, we need to just take this down a little bit. Now this means we need to reduce the output level a bit, and we need to bring this down so we're not clipping the top here. So if we pull the output level down now, so we're about there, and now let's see the difference between the two. It is definitely a little bit more to sort of towards the sort of the bluish again, so we'll pull this up and just tweak this around a little bit. Still a little bit blue there. But we're getting there. And we're not doing quite as much color correction as we were last time. But because we've boosted these colors up, they tend to be a little bit more vibrant. So we might have to take down the saturation a tad on here. Now we're getting a bit nearer. Maybe a little bit too much red, bring that back a little bit. You see we've got greener greens in the corrected version than the original, but we've got the blue. So that's using the fast color corrector and the divide mode. Divide mode is good, quick, easy, and if you haven't got um, a white point, you can pick something which is nearly white. Say you want the brightest white you've got there you want to convert, and that works well. But sometimes I find that you need to add then um, the fast color corrector if you want to get it nearer to what you want in the first place. But if you want to use the divide mode, then to get the most accurate results, I would say make sure you do look at maybe augmenting it with the fast color corrector afterwards. 
So as we've seen, the stronger the colour cast, the more work that will be required to bring it back again. And it's not just a simple one-click solution, especially when you have stronger colour casts. You will need to do more work. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, don't forget to rate, share, and subscribe. And not only on our YouTube channel, but also on our Facebook channel as well too. We also have a free ebook available on how to set up your own home video studio just here. And don't forget to hop on over to video-alchemy.com where you can see more information on the video you've just seen. Anyway, my name's Paul Schlitto. This has been a Video Alchemy production, so until the next time, see you later. Bye.